Hi! In honor of National Breastfeeding Week, I am going to show you how I have managed to exclusively breastfeed both of my babies with inverted nipples and the tools and tricks that I've used and been advised by with lactation consultants and just people that I've talked to that have really helped me through. So this is my journey. If you don't know who I am, my name is Allie. I'm a health and wellness coach. I specialize in pregnancy and new moms and new baby stuff. So if you want more of that kind of thing, I definitely veer more on the crunchy side, uh, please subscribe to my channel. When I was a teenager, I was talking to a doctor and they basically said, well, your nipples might come out if and when you decide to breastfeed. Otherwise, they might not or you might not be able to breastfeed. So I've sort of been wondering my entire life, is this going to be a problem or not? Now, when I was first pregnant during my first trimester, a midwife suggested something called supple cups. These things are kind of amazing and they are literally designed to basically suck out your nipple. Now, one of the reasons you have flat or inverted nipples is because there are a bunch of little adhesions and what this is designed to do is basically break apart those adhesions in advance so you don't have to rely on your baby to do it and deal with the additional pain of breastfeeding when your baby is learning to breastfeed and it's a little bit less difficult for them to have to try to put their little tiny baby mouth over like this massive nipple. So that is the purpose of supple cups. The Amazon reviews for these are going to give you some amazing tips. The two best ones are you definitely want to use some kind of coconut oil, that's my preference, or some sort of oil to lubricate it. It'll definitely make it a little bit less sore and it will be a little bit more soothing to the area because it does hurt a little bit. And the second one is to just kind of start slow and get bigger. So start off with five or 10 minutes at a time and then you can extend it to, you know, wearing them all night in bed. After you wear them, especially if you leave them on too long, you definitely risk having your nipple turn blue and be like super sore. So just be careful, use these with precaution. Another thing that you can try is this device is called the Haka. This was not around, at least not that I know of, when my son was born, but it has been all the rage for the past year or so. It's basically designed for if you're breastfeeding from righty, you can hook it onto lefty and it creates a suction that will collect all the extra milk in this. So ultimately what it's doing is the same thing that the supple cup is doing, which is sucking out whatever you're putting it on. So if you wanted to save the money, not buy the supple cups and just buy this, because then you can use it when you're breastfeeding, you can definitely try it. Uh, I don't know how that works. If you do want to try doing that, um, I do suggest still looking at the Amazon reviews for the supple cups just to check out what everybody says to try to do. It is also a little bit more precarious, whereas the supple cups you can kind of put on your boob and, you know, go around your Mary. But if you have this on your boob, there is definitely more of a chance of it getting caught on things, being in the way. So this is just a lot bigger but you can certainly try it because it does have the same effect and you can definitely use it throughout breastfeeding whereas the supple cups aren't going to be that useful the only thing that you could potentially do is if your baby has trouble latching onto your boob you could kind of elongate the nipple with this first and then try to latch and that sometimes will help before you get these, you might want to check out if you actually need them. If you squeeze behind your nipple and your nipple protrudes, you probably don't need this because that's probably plenty for your baby to latch onto. If when you squeeze your boob, your nipple stays inward, then this will be really helpful because it will help draw out the nipple. So those are the suggestions that I have prior to having your baby. You're really just allowing the adhesions to come off and, you know, prep, do some of the prep work that your baby would do when your baby comes. Now, once your baby is here, there is certainly no guarantee that it's going to be a walk in the park. For my first, it took about four weeks in order to get a little bit better. For my second, it was a rougher two and a half weeks, but then after that it was smooth sailing. So I have my son in a birth center and 
He actually did end up latching pretty quickly onto both nipples, but by day two or three, it was definitely more of a challenge. Lefty has always been my big problem. Righty kind of has the same issues, but it's a longer nipple, whereas Lefty is a shorter nipple and tends to be more inverted than right. So Lefty is usually my problem. If you are gonna be breastfeeding, I definitely recommend trying to find breastfeeding support groups in your area, baby cafes, or if not, at the very least, finding a lactation consultant because all of that, aside from just the social aspect and meeting new moms, you can get a ton of really great information and a lactation consultant is an amazing resource for your journey. So on day like two, I want to say, I started to go to these different groups and talk to different lactation consultants because at one point I was having an issue with Lefty. I was given a nipple shield. So this is pretty popular in the breastfeeding world. I think some of them come size to you. Some of them also have little suction parts of it like the supple cup does. This one doesn't, this one just, you know, lays on your boob and it just basically allows the, the baby to be able to suck through this. It also protects, a lot, offers a layer of protection on your nipple, especially if your nipple is sore and your baby and you are still learning. So it does give a little bit of a buffer. In an ideal world, you are using this almost as a bridge from once your baby can kind of get used to getting a proper latch and once your boob is you know possibly not bloody or whatever is happening with your nipple um eventually hopefully once their mouths get bigger once you guys both kind of have a groove eventually the goal is to get rid of this some moms will use this for months and months and months maybe even years uh it is a little bit inconvenient i think so that's the other downside to it but it can be very helpful my personal experience with nipple shields is it was really great for my son. And the other thing that you can try to do is put it on initially and have your son sort of draw out the nipple and then take the, off the shield and then put it on and then it's a lot easier. So that's a way to use it. I did that for a little bit. Um, and my son would take this and this was a savior a number of times when he just would not be able to latch to lefty or righty. Every once in a while I would put it on righty. If righty had gotten a little bit too sore, I would use it there. The nipple shield did solve most of my problems with my son. Eventually, after probably one or two months even, I think I ditched the shield entirely and I didn't need it very different story for my daughter. My daughter absolutely refused the nipple shield. She would basically bat it away and do anything that she could possibly do to not have to put this piece of plastic in her mouth. And every once in a while, if I made her do it because she would still need to be able to draw out the nipple, she would, instead of actually sucking on it, she would just chomp and she would chomp on it and make my bl nipple bloody immediately, even if it was like just finally recovering. She'd be like, uh-uh, you gave me that nipple shield? Not happening. So every baby is different. Some babies will take this, some won't. It's definitely worth a try if you need it. Eventually, I went to a breastfeeding support group primarily because I was having a ton of issues with her latching and they gave me so much amazingly helpful information. So we would sometimes spend 45 minutes to an hour just getting her to latch. She's screaming. I'm practically crying because this is so frustrating. Once I'm having like an emotional breakdown and I'm crying because they're basically saying, you're actually doing everything right. The problem is, is that the top of her palate is just too high. So she's not able to grip the nipple enough. And even when she does latch, she pops off and then it just becomes a whole ordeal. So the advice that I was given was just have her eat righty. If you put her on righty, and this was probably day 10 at this point, put her on righty and just feed from that side, pump with lefty, and eventually she'll probably go on lefty. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to make that much milk. But that's what I did. And I'll tell you, I started making milk for twins, which is good in some senses, because with my son, pumping ended up being a whole 
thing that like I could barely ever make enough milk for the next day for him. Whereas now all of a sudden I'm getting about 10 ounces a day out of Lefty and because I'm just keeping her on Righty, she keeps sucking and my body keeps on producing more milk for Righty. So I'm basically producing twice the amount of milk that I need. Every once in a while I would put her onto Lefty and she would cry and I would say, okay, not gonna try it, it's fine, we've gone through that traumatic event, let's give it a few weeks and then we'll see what happens. So for two to three weeks, I only gave her righty and I pumped lefty. So now I'm overproducing milk. I'm trying to figure out where I could possibly put all of the milk that I'm putting in even my second freezer because there's just not enough room. And eventually I decide, let me try to put her on lefty again. And she latched, it was amazing. So all of a sudden I started giving her lefty more and more. I started pumping a little bit less and now she takes both boobs and it's not a problem. Yay! So now I don't have to pump as much. In fact, I probably don't ever need to pump again because of all of the milk that I stored. Not true, I will still pump when I need to. The other thing that was suggested, just as an FYI, is if your baby has the same thing where they have you know, a high palate or you, and you think your nipple is just too small, aside from trying to pump to elongate it, I was told that a chiropractor could potentially help. And the reason being is because your baby's skull is still kind of widening and expanding and doing all that stuff. And while it's adjusting because it was just smushed in the womb or coming out of your vagina, it is now you know, popping back out all the time in order to, you know, create its skull. So going to a chiropractor to do little adjustments, obviously a chiropractor that works well with babies, um, is something that you can do in order to almost try to widen out their palate in order to be able to latch better onto your nipple. No matter what, I think lactation consultants are amazing and they will definitely help you with your breastfeeding journey. You obviously might have different issues and it's always good to get your baby checked for tongue ties, lip ties, anything that could be making breastfeeding more difficult for you because if you want to make it work, you definitely can. It just really depends on your situation. Those are the things that worked for me despite it being a very painful and long journey with both of my children. It is definitely worthwhile and now that I'm past that big hump, it's not an issue and I can very easily pop out a boob and breastfeed anytime I want. If you're curious to know if my nipples ended up sort of being more normal, uh, I would say the answer is yes. I do tend to have one inny lefty and one Audi, but um, all I have to do is sort of squeeze lefty and she pops out immediately. They definitely hurt so much more than I ever would have thought when they get cold. It's like it chills my entire body to the core and I don't know if that's just because I didn't have nipples for a really long time so they're like super sensitive or like nipples as part of the world and not inside my body. So I really hope that this information helps and encourages somebody who has inverted or flat nipples to have the confidence that you need in order to breastfeed. It might be a difficult journey, but it's definitely worth it. I love breastfeeding my babies. I'm so happy that I was able to do it. I think you can do it too if you put in the work and um, try to get the help that you need, or maybe you won't even need help because this video was so helpful. If you want to get more of these healthy pregnancy, baby, etc. tips, please subscribe to my channel and have a great national breastfeeding week and beyond.